All right, welcome to Smokey Approved. I'm your boy, Journalist, and on this one, we are doing some musical research on the Irish situation. I'll just say it like that. So we just got everybody covered. So nobody, I don't have to think about any type of allegiances, affiliations, or anything that makes this extra political. Even though this is super political with the song I'm about to do, it is just really just for posterity's sake so I can understand more. So, uh, the homie from the video, I cannot remember his name because it's a very particular name. So, hold on. Please bear with me. Okay. So, yeah. The boy Travolsky, if I'm saying the name right, uh, told me about this artist and was like, yo, you could listen to a song that would, uh, by Junzu, who uh, would give me more information or would provide another perspective. So I'm like, yeah, I totally would like to check that out. So that's what we're here to do. We will be checking out some uh some documentaries from that boy. What's his name in the comment section? Have a good day, I believe. Or have a nice day. Uh he's got documentaries on his channel. Uh I've got one of them open. A couple of them actually. I got like two or three actually open that cover I think in a better format than that vice documentary I was doing on the uh, Northern Ireland and Irish border situation because, again, I understand it's super political and techy, but I've not been educated on this subject at all. So I would like to know more than just, oh, the IRA are a part of the fucking Sons of Anarchy television show. Yeah. I think it's like the extent of most Americans' knowledge. Yeah, I believe that's where it begins and ends. So yeah, I was like, that's not enough for me. So I was like, I can check some more stuff out. So that's how we got here. Thank you for joining me. Sorry for this long intro. I just like to let you guys know kind of what I'm thinking before we get into these. And yeah, thank you for joining me. Let's get into this. And if you could, please hit that like and subscribe. I don't even know if this is rapping, but the voice projecting through my fucking earphones right now does not sound like the voice of a man that has been raised and lived in 1956. What? It's the, it's the same year my daddy was born. What the fuck? We we'll moved to Belfast when it was six. We we'll moved to Rathcoal, the biggest house in the state in Northern Ireland, and that's true. At that time. It was mixed cool the biggest house in the state in Northern Ireland, and that's true. At that time, it was mixed, there was Catholics too. This was before all the troubles began. We used to live around about four rows down from Bobby Sands. We used to play football together on the front with mucky faces and boggy hands. But this was all before all the troubles began. We used to run around the estate, just some troublesome lads. But one day, coming home from school, everything changed. I seen a gang of lads I knew from school, and they were shouting my name, so I walked over and says, what's the crack heads? They said, listen, David, you're a Protestant and we're all Catholics, so we're gonna be jumping through you into the river. I said, why? They said, you said you're a prod. I said, no, I never. They said, yes, you did. You're going into the river. They beat me up and then they threw me in. That day, I learned two lessons. One, learn to swim. Two, don't play with Catholics. They're bad news. <laughs> Cheeky cut. In the middle of... This is the shit I be saying. It's like the reverse of when I'm listening to Abracadabra. And he says the shit about his dad. And he uses the bar about his dad. Like, oh, I beat the pussy up and then cut. Like, my dad. I'm like, oh, like, that's a hard bar. Like, okay, you get pussy. Like, cool. Like, it's a good bar, but, like, let's actually take a moment. The part about you saying you cut, like, your dad. Like, ah, that's deep. That's actually deeper than just the surface level shit it sounds like. So when I hear this guy talk about I learned two lessons that day. 
uh, to fucking swim. And the, the fucking Catholics, so I'm just like, oh, my God. <sighs> you were, not that it's a problem, but just the, the way that our minds work sometimes in the middle of divulging a story that is probably riddled with pain, but, like, he's come to, like, a, an ability to be able to speak about it out loud or, like, record a record on it. And then to just make it a comical moment while also a topical moment. I'm just like, this is the mark of what distinguishes music to be art for me. Doesn't matter what genre or whatever. When you can make music that does stuff like this, it goes from just being music is a whole as art, but like these are the like masterpieces of what this genre can do when you do it properly. And I just I find it crazy. And then I also, you know me, I'm Mr. Get a Hug. So, they gotta, like, these niggas need hugs, bro. This is crazy. This is crazy. Last and dead, you're going into the river. They beat me up and then they threw me in. That day I learned two lessons. One, learn to swim. Two, don't play with Catholics, they're bad news. And that's how it was from that day forward in Rathcool. 1972, we were only kids, but we had hardened minds. Back then I thought the smartest thing for me to do was join the Tartan gangs. We would set upon them. At first we would smash their windies. Later we would petrol bomb them. We would burn them out of their homes. Some people would say, well, if the wrong life, I spent the 18th birthday as a political prisoner, locked up in Long Cash, I got released, but the same week, I was out planting bombs and robbing banks, while at the same time trying So, I'm just dissecting the song and this picture at the same time. The curbs on this picture are in different colors. So, the curb on the right is for the people that are loyalists and are for the UK government and the people on the left are loyalists and they are for the Irish independence if I'm understanding this artwork as possible and like his story just told us he was just a kid in the middle wasn't worried about none of this shit and then has had to be forced to pick a side to essentially survive in a time that is just mental Art is a beautiful thing. Pictures, fucking movies. Oh my god, it's all great. It's all great. I hope I'm getting this picture right. I live a modest life, but I got arrested again and broke the officer's nose to say thanks. Yeah, we get back in jail. We had military status and we called ranks. We had bomb making classes in the morning in prison and weapon training in the afternoon with some live bullets, not blanks. Thanks to the troubles in the streets, there were more tanks. And in my mind, I wanted to do more. Cause if I'm doing this, I'm doing this raw. I wanna join the most fair terror group of them all. I put the word out around the jail. The packy wants to be a lost volunteer. And two weeks later, when I got released, there was a knock at my door saying, Is it true? I wanted to join. I said, Yes, I do. They said, Think it over. Cause once you do, you don't leave. I said, No, I believe. This is a cause worth fighting for. It's a cause worth living and a cause worth dying for. And I said, why not? I'm a loyalist. I've all these tattoos on my arm. No surrender for Golden Ulster. Remember 1690 and everything. And I thought, no, I believe in this. This is a good cause. And I thought, well, if you're still going to be a terrorist, you may as well be a good terrorist. And I thought, the most feared group in Northern Ireland in the Parmondly scene is the UBF. They're very militant and they're very secretive. You can't just join this group, you must be invited by them to be a member. A week later I went with these men and they took me to a bar in Belfast and brought me upstairs into a room. There was three men sitting behind a table and they had an Ulster flag over the table. And there was something else sitting on the table and I am sure this will surprise you. Because you know what it was? One of these, a Bible. And the guy in the middle said to me, do you believe in the Protestant cause? And I said, I do. He says, are you prepared to die for the Protestant cause? And I said, I am. He says, are you prepared to kill for the Protestant cause? And I said, I am. Carried on in my mission and moved up in position Done everything that you could envision My whole life revolved around the organization Became an area commander Turned streets into military stations I got arrested with the rest of my team Because a snitch turned super grass And gave the police information We got sentenced to court so I told 
told my team to dress in uniform for the occasion. We got lined up on the docks like Thunderbirds. He called my name and then the list of offenses that. I don't know what it means to get lined up on the docks like Thunderbirds. Literally the first thing I don't understand in this song. I don't understand a lot of the cultural context, but I'm going to save that shit because I'm trying to understand the story he's trying to paint. But uh, what the fuck does it mean to be lined up on the docks like a Thunderbird? I got arrested for the rest of my team because a snitch turned super grass and give the police information. We got sentenced to court, so we told my team to dress in uniform for the occasion. We got lined up on the docks like Thunderbirds. He called my name and then the list of offenses. Then he sentenced me to 48 years in the underworld. He said I'd serve at least 12 at the minimum. I turned my back on the judge like I wasn't even listening. I saw my mother stood at the back of the court with tears running down her face. She looked at me and said, you're a hopeless case. You're never gonna change. I said, go home and get my head. Peace, ma, I think they took away in chains. I thought I'd never see the light of day again. But meanwhile, my mom didn't go home. She went to tell my relatives what happened. And there was a wee woman sat in her own. She said, Mrs. Hamilton, I believe that God can change your son. My mom said, thank you, but I've done all that can be done. Before starting to cry, she said, what is to become of my son? I never wanted this. The wee woman said, don't you be worrying up. I'm putting him on my wanted list. She said, I believe God's grace. Changes. She said, I don't believe in hopeless cases. She said, I don't believe in hopeless cases. Listen, about a week went by and I was sat in my cell thinking about life and how I'm trapped in hell. I saw a piece of paper lay on my bed. I picked it up and it read, Jesus Christ is coming back soon. I laughed and said, I right, do a cinema near you. I ripped it up and threw it straight in the bin. I made myself a cup of tea without taking it in. But the next thing that happened was very strange. I heard a voice in my head saying, David, it's time to change, become a Christian. Well, I thought that I was slipping or tripping because I was missipping and burnt my lip in my tea. I said, I know what's happening here. These fellas playing a trick in me. They slipped trips in my tea, so I poured it out and looked down the sink. I couldn't see no tabs, then I started to think. What if the voice that I heard was right? What if all these years it was God that spurred my life? Cause I've been shot three times, stabbed in the head with an axe and survived. I've been blown up in a bomb, there's been many attempts on my life. The fact that I'm even alive is a reason to believe in the divine. I realized I was deceived in the mind. So I got down on my knees and I started to cry. Asked the Lord for forgiveness. I said, Lord, let me be your witness. Please rid me of the bigotry and leave me sinless. Let me spread your word, I'll go about your heavenly business. Please change my life, let me live this. And from that minute on, I felt freedom in my soul, even though I was in prison. I, I, I thank the Lord Jesus Christ most of all that what he's done in my life, that he has given me a story. And I believe it tells people that there's no such thing as a hopeless case. If that was true, if that were really true, then you're looking at one, a hopeless case. And I really do thank God we get an opportunity just to share. You know, I said today, you know, some of the best friends in England is trying to find a solution to bring the North and the South and the Protestant and the Catholic together. And yet today we could stand before people and say, we know a solution that works. That's because Jesus Christ is Lord. And we are reconciled not only with God, but with our fellow man. God changes the heart. It's not a united kingdom or a united Ireland, but it's God's kingdom. That's what it comes down to. God's kingdom. God's kingdom. I like the juxtaposition of how just take the title Cause Worth Living For in the first half of the song. You think you're pretty much going to only hear that the cause worth living for is the Protestant fight for liberation. Valid fight. This guy, though, exposes his story, the shit he's been through for the first half. And then for the latter, not even the first half, I'll say for the first, like 75% of the song is truly what has led up to his childhood all the way to what's landed him in jail. That last little 25% is the juxtaposition of maybe the cause worth living for is not just only for liberation, possibly, because I, I can't tell you whether or not that thing. I'm American. That's between you folks. I ain't got time for that. I'm just trying to learn a thing. So it's not only that, but 
maybe the faith and trying to be an example to show people that there could be unification between these two warring factions, that might be the cause that's actually worth losing. Which he now has taken up and feels is the greater cause for him to to support and put his face on and be willing to do the same things that he just said he was willing to do just for the Protestant side of this. He now wants a unification. And this is where, to draw an American parallel, I feel like him going to jail was like Malcolm going to Mecca. So when Malcolm went to Mecca, before then, him and Martin, the niggas was not cool. Martin was Uncle Tom to him. Like, it was just, it was a problem. It was long. But after going to Mecca and seeing so many different races pray together, essentially what Fred Hampton will figure out later, that the co- color coalition is far stronger than any religion, ethos, or anything like that. Nigga, you feel how I feel. We bleed the same. Them niggas is fucking you like me. It's just what it is. Getting people on that page from all walks of life is the far better message or the far stronger one and why they were happy to see uh, Malcolm be the you slap me, I slap your ass back. And Martin was like, they slap me, keep it calm. It's not always the best response. So after coming back from Mecca, he sees uh, Martin's path as possibly the better way forward. And Martin at that time is tired of getting his ass with. So now Martin is starting to see like, well, Maybe a little bit of militancy isn't that bad. Niggas, I'm the, they fucking my good suits up. They out here telling all my, my, my secrets too. It's a problem. It's getting along for me. So he starts feeling a little bit more like, uh, what's it called? Martin. Or excuse me, Malcolm. And then they kind of were going to kind of come together, but then that shit didn't happen. Niggas started getting clipped. However, the point I'm making though is for this gentleman, it's like him going to prison seems to be his Malcolm going to Mecca moment, where in prison he's able to see that the unification or working instead of the whole is far better than one individual party. Because one individual party is cool, but if the advancement that you want affects multiple parties outside of your own, then it would behoove you to just incorporate them from the beginning. It's just it's a smarter play. It's just, it just makes sense. It's just like why you shouldn't down talk your enemy if the enemy's goal is to talk or to, to stop whatever progress you want at the time, but they're still going to reap benefits if you actually win. It just, you're going to have egg on your face in the end. It's just stupid. It's like the politicians that talk shit about niggas and then they endorse them after they don't get the fucking uh, candidacy. It's like, why'd you talk about them like that? Like, and then not stand on it. I'm not about to back no nigga after I talked about that nigga crazy. You suck my dick. The fuck? Go, no. So this long-winded analogy point I was making is it's just crazy to see how he has taken these two points of his life and contrasted them in the way that he has to come out with the viewpoints that he does currently have. Because I know for each individual parties on the Catholic and Protestant side, they now probably both look at this guy as either a traitor or he's still an op so like if you're catholic he's still an op this shit don't change just because you say we all need to be together and then the protestants are probably looking at him like nigga you're a traitor like the fuck he was outside with us and now you're talking about we need to hold hands and get hugs like jern like nigga you tripping that's not what we're doing so it's just it's crazy because a lot of people don't have the ability or choose not to stand on their own beliefs or the things that they fucking come up with in their mind because the larger system or social hierarchy or dynamics in their areas and to hear this song it's got a crazy message and a lot of shit that i just don't understand because i don't know the history it's it's way more techy and that's why i'm like i'm i'm trying to talk about it in a way where i'm as impartial as anybody that's trying to cover this i want to know everybody's side because i don't give a fuck who's right or wrong i just want to know the facts other than that I don't give a fuck, to be completely honest, because it's not my fight. I don't fucking live there. If I did live there, I'm not part of any of this shit anyways. I just want to know what the fuck is going on with as clear facts as possible. So, again, that's why I'm trying to talk about it in a way where, hey, whatever side you may land on or whatever, leave me the fuck out of it. Unless you're trying to tell me the truth. That's it. Otherwise, it's crazy that I just... They don't show these things. 
or they don't publicize them as much as the other stuff. And I'm just like, this is information people should know. This is like, it's just facts. Like, people should know this shit. So, yeah. I guess it's going to be it for me on this one. I can't really approve this joint. I feel like it's in, not like it's, I don't think this is smoky proof. This is smoky reacts anyways. I'm tripping. I don't have to approve nothing. So I don't have to worry about none of that shit. So, yeah, I'm like, because I don't know if you could approve political messages. You could just call them salient songs, but I don't know if I can call it a, an approved record. Because am I going to just bang this as a record? That's definitely not happening. But, like, if I'm teaching somebody about the history of fucking the history of Ireland, whatever I know, I'm like, oh, yeah, you should probably hear this record. It's crazy. This nigga's, this nigga's life is wild. Crazy. But, uh, yeah, that's it for me. I'll see you guys on the next one. I'm out of here. Shout out to the homie that put me on to this. Very much appreciate it. Shout out to the artist. Shout out to everybody that's going to get the comment section to teach me something because I'm just here for the facts. I don't care about, honestly, I'm sorry to say it so harshly, but I just have to draw that line. I truly don't give a fuck. I just want the facts because me giving a fuck, don't change shit. I'm some black guy in America. <laughs> it's really not about to change the needle in no direction. So let's just keep it calm. Please help me learn something. I'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you very much. I'm out of here.